Hello and welcome to number three in my little mini-series of having fun with text in Affinity Photo. Now, for this effect I was trying to get a look of maybe sort of, maybe, yeah, the text being branded into a piece of wood. It may not be 100% perfectly brilliant, but I quite like the end result, so I'm going to sort of stick with this. So, let me just get rid of that. So we have our piece of wood. Now this image I got from pixabay.com and I will add a link to this at the, in the description for this video. So once you have your piece of background, it doesn't have to be wood, it can be whatever sort of background or texture that you want. I'm now going to add some text. Now I'm going to go with the same text I used in that sample earlier, which is uh, Western. Let me just bring out that word. I only really use the text style because of the idea of branding. I thought it would go well with like a sort of cowboy theme. So I use this Western font, which I'm, I got, I downloaded for free. So I'm guessing you can find that or use whichever you f font you want that is similar. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm, I've highlighted the text and I'm just gonna center it. So that the word photo is in the middle and I'm also, let me come off that tool, I'm just going to resize it slightly so it feels it a bit better. It's about there. And then I will center it horizontally and vertically. So, now the color of the text doesn't matter because we are going to be getting rid of the color. So, what I'm going to do now with the text layer which is still highlighted I'm going to click on the effects button it's down here which opens the layer effects panel now the first thing we're going to do is get rid of the color and down here we have a fill opacity set a hundred percent and I'm going to drop that back down all the way to zero so you can't see the word anymore because although we've taken the opacity of the text away, the actual text is still there. And then we're going to add the effect to the sort of invisible text. So hopefully it makes it look like it's sort of going into the wood. So the first thing we're going to do is put a tick into bevel and emboss. Highlight the words to get the options. Now there are any point in this process that you like the result, you don't have to carry on. If you like the result, save it and stop. I mean, because you might just like this effect here of like the outline of the indentation of the text going into the wood. I mean, you might want to darken it up maybe just to highlight it, but if you like that, save it and then that's the end of the video for you. You don't have to go right to the end. So I'm gonna have the type is pillow. Now these are the default settings, so I'm going to increase the radius to 20, so I'm going to sort of click in there and type in 20, it's easier to type in. See again, that's made that much deeper and sort of darker outline, so if that's what you like, stick with that and move along, uh, save. Right, so the soften, I'm going to make 6.5 probably little difference between six and seven but I'll make it 6.5 now this black box here which is next to the word profile if you click inside that it'll open up these standard profiles and there's about six or seven of them here and I'm going to select the end one and that will make that effect sort of a bit darker and a little bit deeper so the next thing I'm going to do is to change the direction. 
Now you can do this by clicking and holding this dot and moving it around and getting an effect that you like. Um, but the effect that I'm going to go with is minus 77 in azimuth and 48 in elevation. So it's sort of pointing down and just slightly to the right. And then I'm going to change the opacity of the highlight and shadows. I'm not going to change the blend mode. So what I'm going to do with the highlights, I'll just click inside that box here. And I'm going to lower the opacity of the highlights down to around 48 50 percent. Here we go, 48. And the shadows are going to increase right the way up to 100 percent. So we now have this sort of indentation sort of look in the wood. So the next thing I'm going to come to do is put a tick into 3D, highlight the word 3D so we get all the 3D options. And the radius, I'm going to make 36. And soften, I'm going to make 4.5. The shininess, which is this one down here, I'm going to lower down to 57. And again, we're going to be changing the direction here. So in the azimuth, I'm going to go with minus 94. Elevation, I'm going to go with 44 and that is the last one the 3D next one I'm going to go to is inner shadow so I've got a tick into inner shadow click on the word to get the options and the opacity I'm going to increase to 75% and the radius I'm going to make 18.5. Offset is just going to be 1. And the intensity is going to be 19. And the direction, I'm just going to have it pointing straight up at 90 degrees. So I can now close that effect a uh, panel and then I'm going to add a layer to the top pixel layer just by clicking this icon down here and then I'm going to come up to filters noise and Perlin noise and the settings I have on here is 13 that's virtually 150 and that's just a little bit over 51 so 13 150 51 and then just click apply wait for that to take effect so that's now had that effect so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to highlight the layer below that which is the text and come up to the select menu and click on selection from layer you can do control shift and O but selection from layer so that will make a selection you just have to wait a little bit of the text that's on that layer so what I'll do now is I'll come back and highlight the Perlin layer and then I'm going to duplicate that. And if I, you can right click and duplicate, or you can do Control and J. But and what that will do is let me hide that layer. It makes 
a copy of the purlin layer but it only fills in the selected area which was the text so I can now press Ctrl and D to lose that selection so I now just have this layer with the purlin noise in the shape of the text and all I'm going to do now is to lower the opacity of this down to around 50% just to get that sort of darker fill into the text itself. So really that would be the end of the tutorial and you can save it. Uh, the one thing you can do a little, if you want to go a little bit further is to just have a little tinker with the blend modes of this layer because I think that just like darken has a much better effect I think and multiply that's quite good really go a bit mad with color burn I think it's mainly the top blend modes that are probably the effective until you get down to about overlay and the different hard lights soft lights vivid lights I think the ones down the bottom I mean I personally didn't like I suppose that's not so bad, that's subtract. But if I was personally, for me, if I was going to go anywhere where I'd probably go with either darken or maybe even multiply. Come off that tool, so I like that, yeah, it's quite good. I like that on the multiply, but because we've lowered the opacity of this layer you can see like the texture of the wood coming through where that is in, indented in to the wood a little bit. Now as an experiment I tried a different background this is a scratch metal background I tried a different font and this was the result I got to up to the point where I'd done the text and I add in the purlin noise and again having a tinker with the various blend modes you can get different effects to you know what you get just with normal now I personally if I remember rightly I think in this one I preferred vivid light because you can still see all the scratches and what have you and I quite like that so whichever background you use whichever font you use don't just stick with normal when you get to the last bit just have a look at the various blend modes and even change the opacity and see what works and what doesn't work for you so that is the end of this tutorial thank you for watching and goodbye